Hello friends, myself Sagar from SJ Tech. Welcome to Spring Boot JPA session. In today's session of Spring Boot JPA, we are going to integrate Postgres SQL database in five simple steps with our account Spring Boot RESTful web service that we have created in our previous Spring Boot session. To get to know more about it, check out the link in the description below. To get the latest update on Spring Boot series, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Now, what are these five simple steps? Step one, adding Spring Boot JPA and Postgres SQL driver class dependencies in build.gradle. Step two, adding properties related to Spring Boot JPA and Postgres SQL in application.properties. Step three, converting account domain that we have created in our previous Spring Boot session to account entity using Spring Boot JPA annotations. Step four, implementing Spring Boot JPA repository. And step five, adding support of Spring Boot JPA repository in service class. What is Spring Data JPA or Spring Boot JPA? Spring Data JPA does an integration between the Spring application and JPA. JPA stands for Java Persistence API. JPA is a collection of methods and classes to persist data in database. JPA forms a bridge between the object model POJO and a relational model database entity. Spring Data is big framework and JPA is a part of it. Now, in our previous sessions, we have implemented account Spring Boot RESTful Web Services, which is supporting all the CRUD operations that is get, post, put and delete by using the in-memory database. Now, in today's session, we are going to integrate Postgres SQL database with this account Spring Boot RESTful Web Services. Let's start implementation. Step one, adding Spring Boot JPA and Postgres SQL dependency in build.gradle. So we'll first add the dependency for Spring Data JPA and then we'll add the dependency for Postgres SQL driver class. So let's start adding. We'll first add the dependency for Spring Data JPA and then we'll add the dependency for Postgres SQL driver class. Once we have added the dependency, we need to refresh the Spring Boot project. Next step is adding properties related to Spring Boot JPA and Postgres SQL database in application.properties. I have already added those properties. So see the first section of the properties is the property related to database like the URL, username and the password. Next would be settings related to Hibernate which is the DDL-Auto which is set to create. That means every time when we start the Spring Boot application, tables is created and the last one would be a Spring Data Source setting wherein we need to set the driver class name which is now set to Postgres SQL driver. Now the next step would be to convert an account domain into an account entity by using the Spring Boot JPA annotations. So the first annotation that we are going to use here is at the rate entity, then at the rate table, we also need to annotate the properties. Now here ID would be in primary key into the database table. So we need to add annotation call at the red ID. And we also need to set in strategy for this primary key that whenever we do a insert operation, so the ID would be incremented, okay, with respect to the previous ID. So let's suppose if the previous account has an ID one. So whenever we do a next time, insert operation then the id will automatically set it to 2. Now as it is also in column we need to annotate this uh, id with at the red column annotation as well. The 
the last one is we need also need to annotate the email property with at the red column by giving a name account underscore email so in this way we have mapped a pojo with an database table step 4 implementing spring boot jpa account repository now the concept of repository has been added to remove the boilerplate code from the application it completely removes the DAO layer from any application okay now let's go ahead and implement a account repository so to implement account repository we need to create an interface with name account repository this particular interface is extending the jpa repository okay so now we have our account repository implemented so this particular interface jpa repository has contained all the method which is required for performing the CUD operations okay step 5 and the last step is to adding and support of spring boot jpa account repository in account service class okay so the first step would be to remove the reference of in-memory database and replace it with the reference of JPA repository. Now in the first method we are retrieving an account object by passing an id to it so we can replace with a method of jpa repository called find1 in the next method we are retrieving list of accounts so this can be replaced by the method called find all of the jpa repository in the next method we are creating an account object okay that means we are creating an entry into the database table so this can be replaced with the save method of jp repository in the second last method we are updating an account so the first step that we are doing here is we are getting an account object from the database and then we are updating its values so we need to replace this with the find1 method ok so we are retrieving an account which needs to be updated and then we are updating its values at the last we need to save this updated account so we can use repository.save And at the last, we are deleting an account, okay, by passing a ID to it. So this can also be removed. This can be also be replaced with a repository method called delete. So in this way, we have added and support of Spring Boot JPA annotation to our service class so friends we have completed all the five steps it's time to do a quick demo so we will first start our spring boot application so in my console i have already logged in into the postgres okay in database sdtech 
so our spring boot application has been started so we'll first fire a get request to get to know whether we have any account entries into our database or not so we'll fire a get request we don't have any entries of account right now so we'll then create a entry into our database by firing a post request so once we have fired this we got a message called account created successfully now let's verify it on the database so we got an entry into our database too now we'll fire another request for updating an account so we'll fire a put request in this put request we are updating a name of the account from account 1 to account updated we also got a successful message here let's again verify it so the name has been also updated here now let's fire the last request which is the delete request account deleted successfully let's verify it yes so in this way we have done the integration of postgres sql database with our account spring boot restful web service that's it for today if you like the content do like share and subscribe and also comment on the video thank you and good day